So I, I like where you were going with this because I want to stay for now on cardiovascular disease. Mm -hmm. So, so far the benefits that we can say for sure have been proven, decreases triglycerides, mm -hmm. right? Decreases cholesterol, um, depending on the diet. Yeah, right, depends um, on what you take out of the diet. Exactly. Right? So it's, right. yeah. Thins out the blood, mm -hmm. uh, so it has a platelet activation um, effect. Um, blood pressure it, too. Blood pressure. Blood pressure. Right. There's a, a small reduction in blood pressure that's again mm -hmm. chronic. Yeah. Another thing that the omega-3s do, and nobody's quite sure why it happens, it lowers the heart rate. The resting heart rate is that. dropped by two or three beats per minute for people in higher omega. If you make the math long term, that's millions of beats. Well, in a way, yeah. yeah. Yes. If you, 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 you got X number of beats. No, actually, no, the reason I used to be a personal term back in the days, so I'm like, if you just drop your beats by 10 beats, multiply that by 24 hours a day, multiply by 365 days a year, I think it's roughly 5 million beats. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> Well, I mean, so hey, if I'm, if I'm in I'm with beats, you. I'm, I'm with you. beating less. I'm with you. I think I'm with that's you. great. Well, and that's you know, we, we've seen, I'm sure we'll talk about it, we've seen yeah. increased in longevity. Yeah. Right. Yes. With so, so let's not go too far yet. I like where we're going. So, cardiovascular decreases blood pressure, decreases heart rate, thins the blood, um, inflammation. Blood pressure. Um, yeah, blood we redu pressure, blood pressure goes redu down. reduces and chronic inflammation. Yeah. Uh, These are hallmarks of hallmarks of, of, of everything we're trying to do as preventive and optimization uh, clinic. Yeah. And this again, I like this. It's not as a drug. It is again what we're trying to do in our clinic. What are the most important foundational molecules mm -hmm. that we need to take that you don't just take them? For our patients, it's really difficult. There's only so many supplements they need to take. So we're trying to be what is at the base of our physiology that we need. That's going to cause And it seems impact. like omega threes, mm -hmm. as again, again, it started life. Life started from a single plankton. Uh, single cell organism in the, the ocean. So this seems to really have so many effects. So cardiovascular benefits, we see all those benefits and not just as a drug to take for a short amount of time, right. but as a supplement that we should think about for long term. Yeah. And uh, you know, uh, this kind of plays into, I mean, you know, for you guys watching at home, the word essential plays a key role here. We were, you know, we yeah. sat with Dr. Uh, Minkoff and talking about essential amino acids. And so essential fatty acids are just that, essential, right? I think, I think we covered that. You know, and when I was getting prepared for, the, for, for this interview, I also, like my big thing, and you know, we focus on, I think Doc has pounced on it. You know, when we look at patients and we are an optimization practice, but we always are considering two things, two major things, their heart function and their brain function. You know, we get those two right. We got a lot of things going on, right? No, plus, I like to think that we like to uh, keep our machinery running like a Ferrari. You're not going to put some crappy oil into your car. Right. You want to make sure you have the best oil running the engine, right? Yeah, and yeah, right, right. For us, Omegas, is that's the oil to the it's, system. It's a good, so, very so good. I think, I think a, a huge um, portion is, is not only heart health, for sure, because we have a very sick population, and we're going to get into some of the sources and supplementation, but also, how do you see Omega-3 and Omega-6 play a role in cognition? And, yeah. brain and brain and brain function yeah. for like anxiety. Ooh, yeah, and that's a that's a big field. It actually, it actually starts in the womb, yeah. oh, uh, wow. where omega three levels. Uh, the brain is is very omega three rich and omega six rich mm -hmm. right. organ, uh, and it's d during human development. I mean, it's where I think people ought to start omega three supplementation at nine is minus nine months old. That's wow. the time you start. You know, I mean, where mom needs oh, yeah. to be doing it. Yeah. Which, by the way, we tested our wives. They did the yeah. the prenatal DHA okay. test and they're okay. optimized. Excellent. And <laughs> because you get, said that it's, it's what it's it's involved is like one of the main molecules involved for the neural development yeah. of the child. So I'm like, okay, my wife needs to have optimal omega levels. Correct. So I I I reduce the risk of you know neuro, bad neural development. Right, right. I, I mean, and it, just to, to rabbit trail a bit more into the pregnancy world, one of the things that omega threes have been pretty much shown to do in randomized trials is to re, is reduce risk of premature birth. Oh, okay. Well, it's the same way of saying they increase the gestational age. Right. So it reduces. Which is huge for development. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of premature births in yeah. America, and, and there's a very expensive, and they're very emotionally challenging. Yeah. Um, so and that's that's a f area where we're very interested in promoting. Yeah. But, but and it's a flag for the future too, you know. And, yeah, and, and, well, and health risk. The best thing for a baby is to stay in utero up till 40 weeks right. and getting all the nutrients from mom. If you take them out and have to be fed in an ICU or a NICU, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, it's, yeah, yeah. it's artificial, not optimal. 
So, yes, so let, let's keep going. On going the on the brain, now. yeah. And so in the eye development, of course, eye is part of the brain, mm -hmm. and uh, visual fields are all important. DHA is very rich in the, the about the richest fatty acid in the, uh, the retina of the eye. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we're interested in studies on omega-3 levels and retinal health. And the retina is also a, a window into the brain. There are new studies showing that you can find uh, problems with the, the retinal blood flow, the retinal nerve actions, and there are op optometrists have way and ophthalmologists have ways of studying these things. Uh, it really predicts dementia. Wow. And it, I mean, it's, it's a neat way to look into the eye and actually see somebody who's at risk for developing dementia. So that whole thing, the eyes are the window to the, to the soul. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. It rings true. It rings true. Yeah. I mean, so I'm taking you out of the rabbit hole. Let's keep Back talking the about brain. the brain. Because I want to know exactly, as we said, cardiovascular health, we saw the importance. Now you're telling us the importance of for brain health from the womb. Mm -hmm. From the womb. From nine, minus nine months. <laughs> minus so keep going with, with us with yeah. the, the, the brain. It, 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 then we hit the whole area of childhood and adolescence, and a lot of people are interested in the role of omega-3 and ADHD. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and Which were both diagnosed. Chronically and you've gotten, and you're getting over it, right? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this one, maybe. I don't know about that. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Bill. I appreciate well, you're younger. I love you. you got a little more time. <laughs> uh, so, and that is an area that's uh, still fuzzy in my mind. Mm -hmm. um, there's some research supporting us, some not supporting right. it. So that's kind of the way it goes. Um, but it's, it's an active area of research, I think, and also in the world of anxiety. Mm -hmm. Uh, there definitely has been a benefit of omega-3 reducing, I think, I think anxiolytic. Anxiolytic, yes. the term, yes. right? Um, there is an anxiolytic effect, and that may be playing into the heart, too. Yeah. You know, who knows how all these things are connected. Um, but the area of most interest is dementia. I think depression and, and dementia. Yeah, and maintaining well, cognitive function. Maintaining cognitive function into older age. And as, as, as we're learning to take care of the heart and other organs better, People are living longer, and now what's the problem? Their brain runs out of steam. Yeah. So, and explain to me now, omega-3s, do they, do they cross the blood-brain barrier? Yeah. And then affect? So if you can give me a little physiology with that. Yeah, brain. DHA, particularly the longer of the two uh, omega-3. DHA is the uh, omega-3 that's in brain, mostly. But the, the evidence, I think, for omega-3 and um, dementia started really with studies that looked at uh, reported fish intake in a big population, and they, they then looked at who got dementia and who didn't, and those who were eating more fish were less likely to, to develop dementia. Okay. Doesn't mean it's omega-3, mm -hmm. but it's a, it's a hint. Mm -hmm. um, then uh, folks like us have done studies where we've looked at blood, red blood cell omega-3 levels, actually DHA levels. This is like the omega-3 index test, basically. Mm -hmm. And we've looked at, we did this in the Framingham study, which is a large uh, population study that started in, in Massachusetts years and years ago. Uh, and we looked at omega-3 levels when uh, people were roughly 60, mid-60s. Mid and we followed them for 10 years and we asked, you know, who, who got dementia, who didn't? And it turned out that people who are in the highest DHA level, highest 25% or 20%, compared to the lowest 20%, we we'll just do it that way, we're uh, about 50% less likely to develop. Wow, wow. that's a huge it's number. Huge it's a big drop, yeah, it's a, huge it's, a big, it's a big difference. Um, and that reflects, I mean, we're presuming that when we measure your omega-3 levels in, in your mid-60s, that's what it's been for quite a while. You've just mm -hmm. developed a pattern, whether, whether it's supplementation or food or just your own biology. We assume that reflects a lifetime pattern of higher omega-3, which is what it takes. Again, you don't take people in their 60s who've never, who've been eating a crappy diet yeah. their whole life yeah, and now put them on a pill right. and expect to change everything. Right. Um, it takes a while. Uh, so and we're now pursuing this uh, idea that, and there are trials going on now giving DHA to people who are, who are showing early signs of dementia and see if you can stop it. We, we, nobody it. thinks you can reverse it at yeah, this point. But you can slow it down. You can slow it down. If you can slow it down until you die or something else, yeah. that's the goal. Now, for, for some people at home watching, because, you know, you talk about Alzheimer's and dementia, and, you know, the guy 35 years old, he's like, nah, I'll worry about that when I'm 60 or 70, right? Yeah, yeah. So, right. you know, to kind of echo what Doc was asking, the physiology, like how does it 
you know, is it because these essential fatty acids feed our brain because our brain is made out of oh, fat? Like, like decreasing yeah, inflammation. How, in the decreasing brain. inflammation. How, how is it? How is the inflammation, right? Um, that's part of it. And I mean, we we had another study published last year, also in in, in part of this Framingham group, in people who are about 45 years old, mm-hmm. not 65, oh, wow. 45. Now, dementia is not a problem there, but but we were able, uh, colleagues actually in Texas were, did MRI scans of the brain, and it's which measured the size and the shape of all the different subparts of the brain. Right. And they did, they administered cognitive function tests, like, you know, how fast can you name 50 things that start with A, you know, that kind of work. Agility. Agility. agility amazing. Subtract seven from 93 down to, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> how do I do that? I wouldn't fail that. I can't yeah. do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but those sorts of things, you know. So they did this in a group of people who were in their mid-40s. And they found that the higher the omega-3 level, the better they did in their 40s. Oh, no, 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 so, no, they weren't, no, again, no dementia yet, yeah. but where are you going? Cognitive. And how does that work? How does it, how, like, why? Don't, don't, brain know. don't really know. Yeah, brain, yeah, thank brain you for your honesty. Yes, we don't, you. We don't, we don't know. know. I think it's important, Bill, uh, now that you're talking DHA, EPA, I don't yeah. know if it's the moment, but... Um, how DHA, they're both anti-inflammatory, DHA and EPA, but right. you know, there's a debate, oh, I should take like Andrew Uberman takes 2000 milligrams of EPA and some people swear it's better DHA and whatever ratio. I understand that DHA is more for the brain, EPA is more for inflammatory response in the body. What would be your recommendation on EPA, DHA and how much grams? Because I believe you take two to three grams is what you recommend. Right, and I, I, I think we should, First of all, say there, one isn't for the brain and the other for okay, good. the heart. I mean, good. it's just not that simple. Yeah, it doesn't so, work okay. as simple. So that's a, that's a misconception right. debunked. There's DHA in the brain. Uh, Therefore, DHA is good for your brain. Well, yeah. all right, that's not illogical, but then they did a whole bunch of studies in, in depression, okay, giving EPA, giving DHA, and they found that for symptomatology of depression, products that were richer in EPA were more effective Interesting. than ones that give them DHA. So, oh, well, maybe EPA is playing a role in your you brain, too. You might give yourself a TBI right Sorry, now. Watch out, watch out, watch out. We, we, we had just Mark Gordon, Gordon yesterday. yesterday. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah hey, those are micro traumas. <laughs> oh, that's a traumatic a, brain injury. That's a nano trauma right there. <laughs> but, but he'll take DHA and EPA, and then yeah, he'll yeah, have yeah, that with uh, <laughs> Right, I mean, they're, they start together in the food chain at the very base. Yeah. Yeah. They're both there in all fish. Yeah. Well, in... Oily fish, okay. So, I mean, and I, maybe that's another rabbit trail, but not all fish are great sources of oil. Oh, yeah. Well, we're definitely that was, going to go that was into my, this. That was my next we're, question, we're, actually. No, we're, we're going to go, we'll go, go there. there so, but anyway, uh, EPA, doses, DHA, what, EPA dose, together, they both are pr- anti-inflammatory. They have different effects on different mar- markers. Uh, they have different effects on lipids. They have probably different effects on, on blood pressure and heart rate and all that. But, but they both work they're together. Synergist. They're, they're synergistic. Is there any query? Because I typically see all supplements usually have more EPA to DHA. I, be, I, I read that it's more expensive to process the DHA. That's why you have more EPA. May, maybe I'm completely wrong. Please debunk that. Well, you start. No, uh, the the standard oil from which almost all fish oil supplements start is an anchovy oil mm. from Peru, off the west coast of Peru, and that oil happens to be like two parts EPA to one part DHA. Oh. Okay. So if you want to start monkeying with that, it gets expensive yeah. to start removing. Right. And, and uh, But that's really the raw material that most start from. Uh, but again, you can also use these microalgae oils that are, are being produced more and more. Um, several companies now are skipping the fish, mm-hmm. and just going straight to the microalgae to make EPA and DHA. And, and I think in 10 years, we're probably going to have land plants. Mm, like making that soybean, oil. soybean oil, where you can... I mean, if we can get over the GMO fear, that's the problem. Um, there are genetically modified yeah. plants that can be, you can put genes in them to have them make EPA, and DHA in the plant, harvest it, and you've got an infinite source, you don't kill any fish. Yeah, I was going to say that because how much fish, if everybody starts taking omegas, we're going to run out of fish. Right, right. right. Well, they're also doing the single, the single cell algae. I like that's that. That's another option one too. Also. Is that because, what you use? Uh, no. Okay. Well, wait, because of the soybeans, soybeans, what I'm always worried about, if they start doing this, our soy here, we, we did our EDC talk, mm-hmm. they spray them with glyphosate. Like 94%. Oh, well, that, I mean, that's, so that's those are other thing, issues. Right? Right. So, so <laughs> all those things we have to think about. Right. So I, I really like this, and I really like, so one thing I always think about is we tend to want to simplify things where you say this molecule is for this. Physiology is so complex that we cannot break it down. Sometimes our simple minds want it that simple. 
but I believe in the entourage effect of supplements. Okay. So what you said is the oil, it's the the fish oil. Is it EPA? Is it DHA? We don't know. Are there other substances in there that work? It's the whole fish oil. I, I love that you're saying most companies get it from anchovies from Peru. So it's still at the end of the day, it's yes, it's EPA and DHA, but there are maybe other things in there that we don't even know yet. Yeah. And what's the ratio? The natural ratio is I'd rather keep the natural, natural ratio right. I mean it, it doesn't have to be 50 50. It could be yeah. it could be 60 40. 70, 30, yeah. But, yeah, but both of them. I mean, it, we really don't have a good. And so if I'm someone that's not just, just not taking supplements and we, you know, our viewers know the value of supplementation because of you know, we've lost so much and mm -hmm. in the planet, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. So if I'm someone that's not like, you know, uh, supplement conscious, what are some of the best primary sources of omega-3s and, and what, what are some of the ones to stay away from? And I'm sorry, not just omega threes. Omega threes and six. And we six. Know oh well, we we get too. Right. So sources of omega three. Of course, I, 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 there, there's a, an acronym called SMASH fish. If you want to think about. There's five pretty high omega three fish, and, and it starts with salmon. S M mackerel. A anchovy. S sardine. And H is herring. Herring. Those they're kind of small. They're small fish. Albacore tuna. I mean, there's there's albacore tuna is white tuna mm -hmm. in the can, yeah. um, and then there's pink. The albacore is about twice as much omega three per serving as a chunk light tuna, oh, and that's wow. pretty good. And that's so it's a good source too. So smash up. <laughs>